beloved nice to see the church filling up and everyone coming um for those who are joining us online if you live um, uh, you know to find us online our uh, tag is uh, at beloved sons of god that's our facebook tag so write to us uh, we'd love to add you on our oneness group which is an international group all over the world all sons join in for those who are living in bombay uh you know if you want to know where we gather again go to our facebook page write to us and we'll give you the address where we come uh and so you can come and be part of sons here okay so um today the tech team is really good and we had some problems last time but now uh you know we're all coming together in the spirit of excellence and everyone knows what they're doing so we're really excited about today so um <clears throat> how many want to get rich and those who don't want to get rich keep your hands down okay <laughs> okay how many want okay and so i'm this entire month we are going to build on uh, uh you know i'm going to talk about abundance but i need to lay some foundations down for that and then we will go on in that okay so progressively so it's um so we're starting today and then we'll just be building on some uh, you know taking out some lies and then building on and you'll be growing where god wants to bring you to a place of prosperity and blessing okay and um this really teaching as you'll go and we'll see as we'll develop on this teaching it's for mature sons so someone who is baby will think like oh they're talking about money okay but as a son when you come into the kingdom he our father is an abundant father okay poverty came from the devil okay and death came from uh, the devil it's not part of our kingdom and so to a layman it look like oh there they go they're talking about money but when you're mature as a son you'll realize he takes you to from a place of uh, receiving where he's giving and then you're maturing maturing into your identity as a life giving spirit okay and so um so this is just one of the foundational things we will go on and then towards uh, i will be talking about to a, come to a place of where it, it, he wants you to be rich he became poor on the cross it says so that you are rich you inherit his wealth okay so um this is going to be an exciting message so let's just go into the word I've, there's a screen here so y'all can all see it as she's going to scroll down i've also put the the pdf file on the whatsapp group so you can look at it uh, there's something why i put all the verses together there's something about you seeing the word and hearing the word so y'all have your two senses y'all are seeing your visual and y'all have your ears like sometimes i have like a photographic memory i can remember some things when i see it so consciously i like when you when you're seeing it try and see the words okay what you uh, what i'm reading so let's go um <clears throat> so i'm going to put this little board up okay and uh, this is our foundational board okay can is it in can everyone see that yeah can everyone see that on zoom can they see it yeah the stand is coming in the way sorry oh the stand is blocking but then this will get how is this but i will need that so what we'll do is get uh, i'll tell you what can you hear this again i'm just going to hear it also and i'm going to uh, you know read it so you can look at the video recording again yeah it will be put on the put on it okay uh, hear me what i'm saying okay so um why is this important okay i've just drawn there and i'll tell for the online audience who's hearing so adam jesus we don't come from adam the minute you got born again everyone hearing me if you're hearing me you're a son of god your bloodline your lineage from adam got cut off we are no more earthly we are born from above born again means born from above okay we come from heaven our origin is from heaven the tree of knowledge of good and evil we came out of it okay that's the the world is living in it's a karmic realm that leads to death we came out now and we are partakers of the tree of life okay and that's what we we are living in okay and where did all that death come in it came into your mind okay the minute adam partook of the tree of knowledge of good and evil where did the death mindset come in it came into your soul into your mind and even as you're hearing the word and now letting the father reprogram you with his words that's why it says if you abide in me and my words abide in you you will ask whatever you want and it shall be given to you 
okay and that's how the life the resurrection life that is in you is flowing out even as you're agreeing with who you are and the whole new covenant when you read acts onwards all that paul is saying is wake up to here wake up to who you are stop believing all the lies that the devil told you because it's like a block i can't do anything when you sit agreeing with him but now as you're coming into this kingdom you're coming into my world i need you to just see and believe start believing who you are and as you're believing the father is doing what he's supposed to do okay adam doesn't have a father but you and i are fathered adam is orphaned okay all the people who are living in this world but in christ when you came you get to have the same father okay you've been redeemed back to your father are you understanding so now let's get into the word <clears throat> i want to begin with this the first word okay it says in Ta- psalm 23 the lord is my shepherd the lord is my shepherd the lord is my father i shall not want i shall not want that word want in greek in hebrew actually means chaser c h a s e r chaser isn't it funny like you know i mean i know it's a it's a hebrew word but it actually means even like i would take it like he doesn't want you to chase anything okay now but that, but that i i know it doesn't mean that but in hebrew that word actually means i shall not lack i shall not need anything i shall not decrease in any way i shall not be scarce and the father will not withhold anything from me that means in every way when you come into the kingdom he wants you to keep increasing and increasing and increasing even in revelation knowledge even in about his goodness towards you it's not death mindset it will always be from glory to glory to glory increase upon increase upon increase that's why every time you're hearing the word the father expects you to walk it now because then when the word says that you know to him little has been given and they will take it out i will take it from them it's talking about actually the word is because when you hear that word the father expects you to apply that and live because he can add more to you so if you if you're hearing something and not applying it you're almost like stagnated and he's like just waiting for you you've heard that now you know the truth now can you walk to that truth okay so now look at this <clears throat> so the first instant okay I want to go to I want to talk about Genesis 3:17 before we talk uh, before we come to Deuteronomy. So can you just go down? Okay. Now the fall, okay? Remember there were two trees in the garden. There was a tree of knowledge of good and evil, there was a tree of life. Now where did the first lack come in? God told Adam, "Don't eat out of the tree of knowledge of good and evil. You can eat out of any tree, but don't eat out of the tree of knowledge of good and evil, because the day you will eat out of it, you're going to die." and why did he say that is because god just said it he had given everything to adam it was a good it was a good decision that god had made for adam already okay it was a command that god had given and now who brings in a lack thought the devil comes and puts in adam or eve's ear okay eve's ear but still the command was given to adam he should have just listened to what the father says and what is the thought that came in what was the thought that was put you lack something So the devil comes and says, "Did God really say don't eat out of this this tree?" No, no, no. If you eat out of it, that you will become just like him. So he put a little seed of lack there. That means there's something missing in you when actually he was already made in the image of God, right? So he the devil comes and puts something and makes him believe that he ha- doesn't have something. It came from him. the lack the death mindset and then it comes into him and now adam it says that he looks at the tree and he thinks it's good for food and then he partakes of it so what happened how did that death come in first he believed he lacked something when he didn't it was a lie that he believed and now he goes and partakes and the whole fall happens and then adam falls into darkness falls into another realm and then jesus comes in pulls us out of darkness puts us into another realm and and in every area that you're hearing in any teaching that you're hearing on beloved it's coming out of a death mindset out of a lack mindset into an abundance mindset okay and so we're going to address the lies first pulling out and then even as these foundational truths are going into all and then god will take you and then you'll find yourself in a place of blessing where things are getting added to you 
And then you'll find yourself in a place of being a life-giving spirit because you're not just trying to be blessed. Now you're in a place of where can I be a blessing? That's sonship, life-giving spirit, okay? From a place of where you were going, for example, in health, you were going to pastors or you're going to someone, lay hands on me, lay hands on me, okay, you got healed. But then you fell sick again. And then you're progressively hearing the word and now you're coming to a place of like sickness is not touching you. And then you're coming to a place of of where I am in divine health. And now I can't fall sick and you're just in divine health. Which is better? In divine health. So same way, even in finances, we come from, yeah, he, he, you know, you have all your needs met and he's like the father and then coming, he takes you into a place of maturity where you are a life-giving spirit. Okay, and that's, we'll talk about that in the, in the, uh, in the messages to come. Uh, but I want you to be in a place of abundance because that's God's perfect will for you, okay? But um, it's, this teaching is for matured sons. So uh, let's lay that foundation, okay? Okay, so let's go. Uh, I'm reading Deuteronomy 3.17. Then, so what, what happened after Adam, Adam partook? He heard the lie, the fall came in, okay? And then what is the curse that came on Adam? Okay, look at this. Then to Adam he said, Because you have heeded the voice of your wife and have eaten from the tree of which I commanded you, saying you shall not eat of it, cursed is the ground for your sake. Cursed is the ground for your sake. We fallen into a realm where everything fell. Even nature fell. That's why it says in the word, creation is waiting for the manifestation of the sons of God. All of creation, there was a testimony, right? Shared on Beloved. I shared it on this oneness group. This girl wanted to have mangoes and a particular type of mangoes, okay? And then she goes out, tells her husband and her husband is like, it's not this, you don't get these mangoes, it's out of season. But she's like, I'm a son. And do you know that creation responds only to the sun? There is this whole new age teaching going on universe, universe, okay? It will, it will come to at some, it will fall is because the universe also will only respond to the sun. Righteousness consciousness. Okay? We'll talk about that in another sermon one day when I'll uh, take it. So, and it came to her. All of it came to her because creation will respond to the sun. It will give her what, they want, uh, what she wants. So what happened? Cursed is the ground for your sake. And then it says, in toil you shall eat of it all the days of your life. In toil. Another word for it in, in, in Hebrew means in worrisomeness. That means you'll constantly be worried about how you're going to produce money. Or how you're going to produce food. Or how you're going to produce whatever you need. The basic needs. In worrisome, you shall eat of it all the days of your life. Okay? And both thorns and thistles it shall bring forth for you. And you shall eat the herb of the field. In the sweat of your face, you shall eat bread. That means in everything now, it's going to be hard and toilsome. Okay? Till you return to the ground, for out of it you were taken, for dust you are, and to dust you shall return. So what was the curse that came on Adam? That means in sweat, everything is going to be a labor. That now it will be hard earned money. But this, this was the curse that came on Adam. So now, if you're redeemed from the curse of the law, Jesus became a curse, hung is he, hung on the tree is he, and he's become a curse for us. So that you and I are free. We are no more under the curse. So you and I, you'll realize after you're coming into righteousness consciousness, into sonship, it will be easy money. It will come to you. Okay? Even as you're waking up. Now, uh, I want to talk about, can we go up to Deuteronomy? So for those who are new, the Old Testament is a shadow of the things to come, okay? So uh, Deuteronomy is all about the children coming from Egypt, okay? To the children of Israel coming out of Egypt into the promised land. And Egypt was called bondage. Coming out of bondage. And what was the bondage? They were under these taskmasters, the Egyptians. So in everything, it was so hard for them to, to make anything. Just, just barely eating or barely surviving. And God pulled them out of Egypt into the promised land. And let's look at the promised land because the promised land gives us sort of a, an analogy or a metaphor of what the rest is of what God has promised us today. Because we're all in the promise. We're all in Christ. We're all in the rest. It was called the rest of God. Okay. And so look at this. It says here, 
So it shall be when the Lord your God brings you into the land of which he swore to your fathers, to Abraham, Isaac and Jacob, to give you large and beautiful cities which you did not build. Large and beautiful cities which you did not build. Houses full of good things which you did not fill. Hone out wells which you did not dig. Vineyards and olive trees which you did not plant. When you have eaten and are full, then beware lest you forget the Lord who brought you out of the land of Egypt from the house of bondage. So we're going into a land where someone is doing all the work for you. Jesus went on the cross and did all the work for you, including things in houses, things that you like, and someone has put them there. Now look at this. I've just skipped a few verses. I've gone to seven. Uh, I think it's the next uh, chapter, Deuteronomy uh, 7, I think. Anyways, the verse 7. For the Lord your God is bringing you into a good land, a land of brooks of water, of fountains and springs that flow out of valleys and hills, a land of wheat and barley, of wines and fig trees and pomegranates, a land of olive oil and honey, a land in which you will eat bread without scarcity. A land, it also says, this land is a land flowing Flowing, flowing with milk and honey. That means it's not stagnated. That means it's just continuously flowing. And it's saying that you will eat bread without scarcity. That means no lack. And it says here, in which you will lack nothing. A land whose stones are iron and out of whose hills you can dig copper. That means wealth. When you have eaten and are full, then you shall bless the Lord your God for the good land he has given you. A land in which you will lack nothing. In a land in which there is no scarcity. So you've come into the kingdom and the first thing I want you to do before you can receive all the wealth that the father has for you is first you believe the truth and get the lies out. No lack in any area. Today there are so many COVID cases, okay? People are dying. But what do you see? Do you see the deaths or do, do you see the people who made it out of COVID? I choose to look at the life in everything. And you, you started in the small things. You know, there's a saying, right? You can see the glass half full or half empty. If, if I have this uh, big white chalkboard and I make a black dot, everyone, will you see the black dot or will you see the white board? It's like that. What are you focusing on? Okay? And God wants you to bring, out, bring you out of the lack mindset into an abundance mindset. Okay? And we're going to see Jesus. Okay, now we're going to look at how Jesus responds, responds to lack. Okay? So let's go to John 10.10. 10. So who planted the lie? The devil planted the lie in Adam. Okay, a lack mindset, lack consciousness that you don't have something. Now Jesus comes, John 10.10. 10. The thief does not come except to steal, to kill and to destroy. To steal, to kill and to destroy. That means death. I have come that they may have life and have it more abundantly. That word abundant in Hebrew, in Greek, look what it says. It means perisos, which means, I'm, I'm reading all the what it means. It means more. It means greater. It means excessive. Excessive. Abundant. Exceedingly. Vehemently. Preeminence. That means the first of everything. Advantage. Beyond what is anticipated. That means you're thinking you want something. And now God is going further and giving you something that was beyond your expectations that you look at it and just say, wow, this has to be God because I couldn't even conceive this. Okay, look at this exceeding expectation, more abundant, going past the expected limit. What is the expected limit? Have you seen a credit card and it has an expected limit of 50,000? And then suddenly one day you get up and they've, it's got another zero there. It's become 50 lakhs. And going above and beyond the expected limit. Okay? More than enough. It means over and above. More than is necessary. Super added. It means superior. Extraordinary. Super passing. Super passing. And I love this word. Uncommon. You know, in every area, God calls you uncommon. Holiness means, holy, when you're set apart, it means you're uncommon. That's what you are. You're not common. You're uncommon. That means you're holy, set apart. In all things, you have something that is just supernatural, that is added from above. And that is what the Father wants to give you. 
Now I want you to bring out the death mindset and this death, death mindset could be because of some of the experience that you've had in your life and so you're so programmed even by those experience to, to just think that it's been failure, it's always been lack and then God wants you to say, can you just remove, wash all of that in the blood, forget that and just take on my word that a son lacks nothing. You believe the truth first because the father says so, not because your even experiences d show, uh, didn't match up to it. That is what it means to, to bear, we, we take on the testimony of what the father says about us. When you just take the word because he says so, the whole kingdom will bear witness to it. The whole kingdom, all of creation got her the mangoes and gave her added, which she didn't want. Okay, when she started believing first who she is and now you'll start seeing these unusual things start happening to you is because you don't even know that creation is responding, looking, 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 where is the sun? And is getting responding, responding to the sun. Okay, now look at this. Look at Matthew 14. Jesus never acknowledged lack and so neither should we. He never acknowledged lack. Okay, now let's look at this. Okay, this is feeding the 5,000. So there are multitudes that come. I'm just going to, I'm going to read this out because there are new people and so they, they don't know and so they're going to hear this. Okay, when Jesus heard it, he departed from there by a boat to a deserted place by himself. But when the multitudes heard it, they followed him on foot from the cities. And when Jesus went out, he saw a great multitude and he was moved with compassion for them and healed their sick. When it was evening, his disciples came to him saying, this is a deserted place and the hour is already late. Send the multitudes away that they may go into the village and buy themselves food. So now Jesus has come to this deserted place. There are multitudes with him. Okay. And now, and now the disciples say, you know what? The hour is late. Send all of these people away that they may go to their villages and buy themselves food. But Jesus said to them, they do not need to go away. You give them something to eat. So think about it. This is wilderness. And in wilderness, that means there's nothing there. So wilderness could be, oh, let's go for a good opportunity abroad because India has nothing. But the blessing is on you. It's similar here. And Jesus is saying, this looks like wilderness. And then he's saying, no, don't sell the multitudes away. Don't send them to the other village to buy. You give them something to eat. And now it says here, then they said to him, we have here only five loaves and two fish. Only five loaves and two fish. And he said, bring them here to me. He doesn't acknowledge the five loaves and two fish as only five loaves and two fish. He looks at five loaves and two fish. Wow, this is a lot. And he says here, bring them to me. That means bring whatever you have to me. He told Moses, what do you have? Moses is like, I just have a stick. Yeah, take the stick. I can work with the stick. And then all these amazing miracles in Egypt happen with just the stick of Moses. He lifting it up, the Red Sea parting. He throwing it down, the stick turns into a snake. Whatever you have eat with you, if, you're, if, if it's in the hands of the sun, it gets multiplied. That's why even for businesses, and I know people have written to me to share on, you know, money and uh, making, uh, you know, successful businesses. And that's why I've taken this and we're going to go on with that. But whatever you have with you right now, God can work because in the hands of the sun, everything multiplies. So when you're saying giving it to Jesus, but it is also giving it to you because you're another son. And so I look at it and I say, he doesn't look at lack. The humans look at it as lack. Adam generation looks at only five loaves and two fish. But the sun looks at it like five loaves, two fish. Give it to me. Because in the sun's hands, everything multiplies. Everything multiplies. Okay? You can have one thing, one idea, and it will multiply. God will give you wisdom. It will just multiply. So don't be lack conscious. First, the truth. Hear the truth. Hear the sermon on the solution to everything is the sun then you will understand. It first begins with the I am. He, he says, so now, it, now look at this. Jesus said, I am the bread. And now the bread goes to like these million people who've come, thousand people who've come. So now look what happens. Then he commanded the multitudes to sit down on the grass and took the five loaves and the two fish and looking up to heaven, he blessed and broke and gave the loaves to the disciples and the disciples gave to the multitudes. So they all ate and were filled and they took up 12 baskets full of fragments that remained. That means there was 
abundance overflowing. There were leftovers. Those who had eaten were about 5,000 men besides women and children. Everything multiplies in the hands of the sun. Now first I want you to believe this truth. And then what happens when certain things you have in your hand and it's not multiplying. And then you change it and say, oh Priya, it didn't work. And that's when you have to believe this word that you shall lack nothing simply because the father says so. I believe this. And because the father says so, and after some time you'll realize when the spiritual realm, when the principalities, they all know that it doesn't affect her even if her business goes up and down. She believes this truth because the father says so. Listen, that's when you are set apart. That's when you're, it's like holy, nothing can touch you, uncommon. And everything starts responding to the sun in you. Are you understanding? Every time you take on a word, no, there's a test. It goes through, it gets churned, it gets tested in you. Everything comes to take that word out. And that's the time it says to labor and to just hold, endure. And when you endure, that means when Jesus heard, you're the, you're the beloved son of God, he goes through a wilderness, everything comes to take that word out. And he just stands. And after that, what happened? After that word couldn't come out of him, he started going and the devil started running. That's what hap happens. Okay, look at this, look at Matthew 15. Jesus heals great multitudes, okay? Now this another time, finds himself in the same place. Now Jesus called his disciples to himself and said, I have compassion on the multitude because they have continued with me three days and have nothing to eat. Again, same conversation, disciples said to him, where could we get enough food in the wilderness to fill such a great multitude? Jesus said to him, how many loaves do you have? Seven and a few little fish. Again he commanded them, made them sit down, Take, takes the same loaves. Now this is a second miracle. You think like the disciples would get it. They don't get it. So again, lack mindset, oh, we don't have something. Same miracle, maybe big, uh, you know, different, uh, um, different quantity of people, but he's doing the same thing. And then, verse down, I'm not going to read the whole thing. Uh, you know, he's going on and uh, telling them about not listening to the lies of the Pharisees or whatever they are saying. And then the disciples can't understand and they're like, oh, is he talking about we have no bread? And then Jesus gets really angry with them and says in verse 8, why do you reason among yourselves because you have brought no bread? That means why do you think lack still? And then he goes on to say that what did I do last time? And how many basket full of leftovers did you pick up? And then what did I do this time? And how many basket full of leftovers did you pick up? So why do you consciously think of lack? The blessing is in you. It's not on the place. So you can be in a company. And as Rishi shared that example, do you know that that, that university may not be in the top? And the minute the sun went there, suddenly from whatever ranking it was to 40, suddenly it comes in 10. How does that happen? It's because the sun went there. And everything is drawing, everything creation is responding to the sun. So if they, he better be there for many, many years because the blessing is on him. Okay, wherever you go, the company that you join, the company, that company will be blessed because the blessing is on you. If you go to, if you, if you, you know, don't look at lack, in wilderness he multiplied. That means God doesn't need that placed to be financially booming beforehand. You can be in a deserted place and still be the richest. Because the he, he doesn't look at scarcity. Because your supply and my supply is coming from the kingdom. It doesn't com come from natural resources. That's what he was trying to say. The disciples were looking like, this doesn't look like a place of wealth. No bread here. And then Jesus is like, it doesn't matter. Because I am the blesser. It's going to come from above. So he takes that and he blesses it and literally in the hands of the son, so it's here now, and I'm saying, Father, I thank you because my abundance is coming from you. And now it comes from you. That's where it is. In the kingdom, it doesn't matter if there are hundred of the same ideas. It doesn't matter. The world has competitiveness in it. But in the kingdom, there could be five people here with the same idea. And the Father will bless all of them because it says that we are living of His riches. That means each one is getting, He's not sharing His wealth. And I know it's a carnal mind can't understand that. But all of the wealth is for you. All of His wealth is for you. All of His wealth is for you. And so you're receiving all of His wealth. 
So there's no scarcity, there's no competition. He calls you beloved. He calls you beloved, the favorite. And then a carnal mind can't understand that. I told you once I had a dream on, uh, you know, and I was on Facebook and I was interviewing Jesus and there he was adopting children. And I got to ask him, I said, why are you adopting so many children? What do you get in this? And he said, Priya, do you know that I have so many children, but they have just one father. And getting to be their individual father is my greatest pride. And I don't like anyone taking that away from me. That's why I tell you, please go to him. Don't come to me. Okay? He gets to be your father. And so you'll have more testimonies when you go to him. If you come to me, you will have no testimonies. But if you go to him directly, he is going to give you abundance. All of his, all of his wealth is added to you. Okay? Now look at this. Let's go ahead. Look at, um, <clears throat> what is the next one? Uh, let's, okay, yeah, amazing. Let's look at the fig tree. Okay, so Jesus comes to this fig tree. Jesus is hungry. You are hungry. You are a son. You are coming to a fig tree. And the fig tree doesn't pr produce for him. What does he do? He curses it. And so it looks like, whoa, Jesus cursed a fig tree. It's because he doesn't acknowledge lack. Creation responds to the sun. It should have just produced for him. He can walk on water. It should bear a fruit. It's like in rebellion. But he doesn't address lack, a tree without fruit. This is not in my path also. And then he curses lack because he hates lack. It doesn't come from his kingdom. Okay, and this entire, the fig tree dies. The devil can sometimes make you see only the one thing that you've still not inherited and make you miss out on all the amazing things that God has blessed you in. And that's a lack mindset. And then he'll make on and there is so much of abundance in your life, but oh look, in this area you still haven't borne fruit. And yeah, maybe God is working with you and co-laboring with you and co-laboring with the Holy Spirit and you will bear fruit, but don't let those thoughts get you into just looking at that. Start seeing and start multiplying, at, you know, looking at all the other testimonies that you have and they'll just get added. That's how he does things. Sometimes when people come to me with their problems in Beloved, I just show them other people with more problems. And then they feel happy. It's because, you know, in comparison, like, oh, my life is so blessed. And I do that sometimes. It's just to make you appreciate, look what you have. You have a house. You have a husband. You have children. Enjoy. Are you in health? Yeah, you're in health. So rejoice in all the things that the Father has given you. And then even as you start acknowledging those, more things get added to you. Because the, the truth is that you're not allowing lack mindset to come in. Because it comes from the devil. Okay? Now see this. Jesus turned water into wine. So he's going to a wedding. Jesus is invited to a wedding. Okay? And now there is no wine. Again, there's, there's lack and coming to his ears. And someone is saying there's no wine. And then it says, Mary says, you know, goes and tells this to Jesus. And what does he do? He just put, tells him, okay, get the water pots. And then he turns water into wine. And such amazing wine that even the, the host or whoever was holding the wedding, he's like, wow, the best wine is kept for last. But this is not Jesus. This is also you. And so I'm trying to tell you, if you hear lack coming to your ears, what is he doing? He doesn't address lack. So when you look at the bank account, why do you look at saying, oh, I have so little? Can you look and say, oh, I have, I have 500 rupees left? Yay, five loaves and two fish. And maybe when you start rejoicing in it, that will get supernaturally multiplied. Because first, God wants you to come out of the lack mindset. Start thinking like a son. Then when you start thinking like a son, he can add all of creation, all of the kingdom will bear witness to you starting seeing yourself of who you are first. Okay, you know, I want to uh, address something, okay? So there was somebody who had a lovely dinner. Okay, now uh, everything about a son is about who you are in the microcosm, in the small things. So this lady invited people for dinner. Now, if you've given your word to somebody that I am coming, keep it. It starts in the small realm. Now, I can understand when you can't make it for certain things or whatever, but let your yes be yes and your no be no. Because I am a son. So if I say yes, I'm going, I'm going to go. Okay? So now I came for this dinner and, uh, and this lady cooked an amazing meal, had, you know, got up in the morning and was so excited that people are coming to her house and she's a son. And I'm going to talk about... How 
talk about why it's important of both these sons not forgetting their sons even in the little things that happen. I'm using this illustration, okay? This happened. And so now she's cooked dinner, she's excited, and then she comes to know people start dropping out. I'm not coming. Now, do you know that, now those who are invited, now this is for you, you're our sons, you know Christ, right? If you don't honor your own word, how do you expect the demons to honor you? <laughs> it works like that, I'm telling you. When you start taking yourself seriously, I spoke it and I will come, the spiritual realm recognizes she first believes her own word. You know our president or a prime minister, whatever, he will believe his own words. So when he speaks, he doesn't have to tell people to obey him. They will automatically obey him because he honors his own word. It begins with that. I need to honor my own word. That's why in the Bible it says scripture was fulfilled. Scripture had to be fulfilled. So Jesus came, came here. He went to Nazareth. He came from Nazareth. Then he sat on a donkey and went. He said because the scripture had to be fulfilled. And what was scripture? Someone had prophesied. Someone had spoken. And the word had to be honored. Are you understanding? But you and I are also sons. And so when you start, I'm telling you, you take dominion in the small things. In the small things and in the bigger things, things already obey you. Because they know in the small things, she honors her word. I honor my word. If you are committed to be on time, be on time. 7 o'clock, I will be there by 7. And you'll realize what is it by me just showing up on time that suddenly the boss also, your payment was stuck and it got released. It is in the small things you take dominion. Long before David took down Goliath, he took down a bear, he took down a lion. It is in the small things. And then the Goliath anyway came down. How did even India get, how did UK start reigning over all these countries? In small places, small, small, small states, small things, they started taking in small things and then they started ruling. You take dominion in small things. So guess what, so some people don't show up. So for you who didn't show up, start honoring your word. If you say, if you can't go, yes, I, I will not be able to come. If I am gonna go, I am going. And honor that word and then you'll see in other areas, things start honoring you. Now, let's say for this girl and people didn't show up at her house. Now, what is her stance as a son? Does she see the people that didn't come or does she see the people that came? Oh, these people came and I'm going to rejoice at the ones who came. And what about the overflow of the food? I'll give it to the poor. There is no lack for a son. Jesus said, you know, when he did all these miracles, people started lifting him up. And then Jesus said, I did not, it says in the word, he did not give himself to man because he knew what was in man. That means tomorrow if I let my joy be in people who came for my party or didn't come for my birthday party, my God, the devil can really, he knows how to tick Priya off. Just don't show up at her party, she'll be all low. And then you don't put your joy in people. Your joy comes from my heavenly father. That's why Jesus said, when all the disciples left him and he said, you will all leave me, but no lack mindset. But then he says, I am not alone. The father is with me. And that is you and I. We are not alone. I remember sharing with uh, them, you know, I had a party once, birthday party. Mother was there with me. So I go to this nightclub, I'm dancing. And now I get a message from all my friends saying they're working late in the office. They can't come. So I'm thinking, okay, they want to give me a surprise. So I'm really thinking, okay, they'll show up at 12, okay? So I'm all excited and I'm dancing and everything. And then I'm looking and now it's nearing 12. Three minutes to 12, I'm like, okay, I'm still going to act like, and I'm, I was just gently telling them, yeah, it's okay if you can't come. I was playing along. I thought that's the, you know, that was the plan. And then it is like one minute to 12, and now I start like, seriously, is no one coming? Okay, and it was 12 and no one came. Okay, and I'm in this nightclub, and do you know what I did then? And my brother also got lost. I don't know where he went. So I'm alone. It's my birthday, and I have no one. And then I went and me went to that, the guy who's playing the music. I said, it's my birthday, can you announce it, okay? And so he goes, hey, it's Priya's birthday, everyone. And so this whole nightclub starts singing and jumping up and down. And uh, then my brother came wherever he heard it and, you know, he came. But my point is, now friends didn't show up. Now either I can get depressed about it, but that night I had random hundred people singing for me. And I had an amazing time and I danced the night away and the next day I went, I was so normal, they thought I'd be upset. I was like, no, I had the whole nightclub singing for me. I had a good time. I had random friends that I didn't even know. But you can either see lack or, or you can see abundance. And my point is when you start not putting your happiness in people, 
that it's in you and the father makes it more glorious i would have never thought that my memory of that would be like oh i had no i had people dancing okay and from that point on i don't i have my own i manage my own parties i don't let other people plan it cuz <laughs> cuz they do a bad job at it okay but uh, i'm just saying it's how do you look at it okay if you don't have lack then god will always give you abundance i i didn't see lack i didn't see the four people that didn't come i had 100 people jumping up and down okay look at this look at matthew 8 the leper comes okay someone who's sick again this is lack someone who has no skin no good skin lack mindset and then comes to jesus and jesus says i'm willing and heals him so even sickness what is sickness is a lack of health in any area and but in a son it is life giving spirit that's why i said first you remove death mindset death came in because of the fall but after we've come into the kingdom it's the law of life that is working in us and even and that law of life works even as you rest meaning knowing that you know what even the symptoms are showing in my body no but it's not in my nature to have any lack lack for even divine health i cannot have these symptoms and that resurrection life will do what it's supposed to do now i ignore i don't even run after the problems okay look at this in lazarus okay you can read that but i'm just going to give you that instance so lazarus is again it says that jesus loved uh, loved lazarus martha and mary they were all brothers and sisters and so lazarus dies there's death now that comes to jesus is yours and says that oh your loved one is dying and the minute jesus hears lack he says this sickness is not unto death but for the glory of god he speaks who he is first and then he sees and long story he waits there more because he wants lazarus to die why because he can come and raise him up again have a bigger testimony and then he goes there four days later and this dead guy from the tomb starts he just says lazarus come out i thank you father that you always hear me that in my in my realm in my life there is no death and why is there no death because he says i am resurrection and i am life it begins every problem outside that's why i told you hear that sermon on the solution to everything is you every problem outside is addressed not horizontally but vertically that means you first believe who you are and you in you not forgetting who you are that thing will get fixed so when i didn't forget or when jesus says i am the resurrection and the life this dead person comes back to life i am resurrection that means something dead has to come back but i am life means what i can't have death only you can't be two you can't be death and life so i am life so that means everything in my in my life will just be life it can't die and death mindset comes from the world so you look at people and people are dying it's happening to them i really live my life and i'm not kidding this is the truth it can happen to them it will happen to them it will not happen to me i don't know how many times they show i just live my life like that because that is the truth and then it it gets added to you is because that that is means a thousand fall at my side 10000 at my right hand it shall not come near you but this is still given to adam adam generation david you're in christ now imagine jesus going he doesn't care about how many of a death wherever he walks there will be resurrection i told you once i was in a mall the wa- mall was dead for some like 10 years just i just took a place to rent it out it started again people started coming there the 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 political party got changed and that entire mall started functioning again just by my presence because you are resurrection and you are life and after some time the very things that are happening around you you'll start believing who you are so what does the father want you to do first start believing who you are there's no lack just start saying it's not in my nature lack is not in my nature it's not in my nature lack death is not in my nature i am life that is the foundation first for this truth that i want you to lay no lack in whatever you see in whatever you're hearing in in people who are, who are prospering around you no you are getting it from the abundance of heaven you don't need to compare yourself with others okay look at the um, <clears throat> let's go ahead okay uh, i want to take some examples yeah for example when your hair falls do you look at the number of hair that have fallen down or you look at the number of hair that are still on your head i'm it's in the small things i'm telling you and then because i ha- i had this right my i have never had my heart go like this like this like this than when my hair was falling 
okay because you know i was just coming and i was like <gasps> and here we go and it was so bad and then because you are just looking at what's gone not realizing what's still on your head you know and you and then uh, you know my literally rest was that time god just told me to get a job i told you that because he wanted my focus to go and i started tying my hair i was not looking in the mirror also and praise god he just wanted me to rest and even as i just rest rested which literally meant i didn't worry about it i didn't run after the problem because sense is a sense rem makes you run after the problem when i got my focus off all my hair came back because it's not in my nature to have lack that's how the kingdom works the holy spirit is there in you to do something let him do his job and he just wants you to chill and relax and you don't forget your origin where you come from okay that's why in in james it says he who looks into the perfect law of liberty and doesn't forget and is a doer of the word this man is blessed in what he does but the one who forgets he deceives himself that means i am telling you it's not in your nature to lack then you will go out you look at your bank account you look at your hair that's fallen you look at some bad relationships that you've had oh i i lack that's what it means in, and the father is saying you are lying to yourself when that happens i want you to start believing the truth because just because it's my testimony about you and that's how jesus lived he he believed it is because it's the father's testimony about him and then everything is matching up to that testimony when it's not based on the the seeing and the doing and experiences they match up later on are you are you understanding this okay now look at this okay now look at now these are the truths ephesians 6 what does it say now if we sorry romans 6 Now if we died with Christ we believe that we should also live with him knowing that Christ having been raised from the dead dies no more death no longer has dominion over him death no longer has dominion over you I told you the cross is identification so when he died you died when he rose again you rose again what did he die to what did Jesus die to Jesus didn't have to <clears throat> didn't have to die to make him life Jesus was already life before you and i had become slaves to death that's why he came to set us free he was already free he is already the son he is life and resurrection but we after adam listened to the devil we fell into the realm of death and so jesus came became became our identification on the cross to set us free who are bondage to death that means now death is under your feet and my feet okay death no longer has dominion over me just meditate on that take this verse meditate on the whole week what it means death no longer has dominion over me that means it has no power over me so in every area death has no dominion everything comes from death death has no power over me anymore that means in all areas i can start seeing life it increases it increases it increases okay look at ephesians 1:17 i'm just reading it says that paul is praying that the eyes of our understanding be enlightened okay and in verse 17 which he worked in christ when he raised him from the dead that is the father and seated him at the right hand in the heavenly places now see this far above all principality and power and might and dominion and every name that is named not only in this age but also in that which is to come and he put all things under gitu's feet all things under shital's feet all things under priya's feet and gave him to be head over all things i am the head over all things because i'm one with christ all things are under my feet all things are under my feet this problem that i'm worried about this problem is under my feet it is under my feet whatever problem that you come it's it's associated with death and lack and then you begin to run after it begin to worry about it and then god says can you not run after it can you not worry about this and rest and then who you are because now you're not running because you know where you come from everything starts getting added to you or that problem begins to submit to you okay look at this okay look at 2 timothy 1 therefore do not be ashamed of the testimony of our lord nor of me his prisoner but share with me but share with me in the sufferings for the gospel according to the power of god who has saved us and called us with a holy calling not according to our works but according to his own purpose and grace which was given to us in christ jesus before time began but has now been re- revealed by the appearing of our savior jesus christ who has see this who has abolished death and brought life 
and immortality to light through the gospel. Who has abolished death. What does it mean to abolish death? Destroyed death. Christ going on the cross, he has destroyed death for me. Death for me. That means in every area I don't need to fear any more of death. And whatever my experiences gave me, and yeah, even as I'm renewing my mind now, I know that, oh, I don't have to have a fear of death in any area because he abolished death for me. It has no right to come into my life. And see this, and it says, I brought life and immortality to life. I told you as a son, you can keep living. You can cross 100, 200, 300. You can wait till Jesus comes. Or you can lay your life down if you want to go. It's in your hands now. Because death is no more in the devil because he said he destroyed the one who had power of death over you in Hebrews. And now you can choose when you want to go, you want to be with him or you just want to progressively live. Yeah, you can live. It's not in your nature to even age because age is also comes from lack. It comes from death. That's how you keep aging. And people say you don't look like, I said, yeah, because I believe it. It's not in my nature to age. I can look like this even when I'm 50, 60, 80, whatever. It's not. Start believing those truths. And I believe the truth, why? It's because it's my father's testimony. I don't keep going to the mirror and checking if I get wrinkles. And oh, the wrinkles will depend on if this truth is real. I just believe it. This is the truth based on my father's testimony. That's what it means. I don't need to, I don't need to verify it. That's what it means when you believe just because your father says so. That is the truth and everything will line up to it. Okay? Now look at this. In Hebrews 2, okay, it talks about... In as much then as the children have partaken of flesh and blood, he himself like, likewise shared in the same, that through death he might destroy him who had power of death, that is the devil, and release those who through fear of death were all their lifetime subject to bondage. That means we were constantly bound because you fear death. And death is under your feet. In every area right now, just look at the lack mindset that you have. A person can have some failed relationships. And then really think that they're undeserving to get something amazing. It's a lack mindset and you're looking at those experiences and you have, you have put a tag on yourself. No. Your inheritance comes from your father. You know, in the, the world looks at it like in this age group there aren't, I've heard this saying, there aren't many girls, there aren't any men in the world. Don't say that. You're not living off the earth, earthly realm. There are hundreds of sons in the kingdom and God can attach one to you. And when I say a son, I mean for a male or a female. Okay? So your abundance is coming from heaven. So you don't have to go on age clock, the world goes. In the kingdom, there is no age. God can match one son who is 15 years younger, 15 years old to other. It's by a son's maturity. Okay? Don't think like the world, from the patterns of the world. We are born from above. So your abundance is coming from the kingdom, so how does it matter? So you, you don't have a death and a lack mindset. No, it, it'll come from him. He will add to you. Okay? See this. Let's read Philippians 4. And my God shall supply all your needs. All your needs according to whose riches? His riches in glory by Christ Jesus. Now to God and Father be glory forever and ever. Forever and ever. Amen. Where are your riches coming from? Where is it all coming from? It's coming from the Father. It's not coming from this realm. It's not coming from this earth. That's why, think about it, why does Jesus not, in the wilderness, why does he multiply? It's because he wanted his disciples to know that your inheritance and your wealth doesn't come from what you're seeing. It comes from me. But look at how Jesus responds, right? He doesn't address lack. He doesn't address any death. In the path of the righteous, it says there is no death. That's why whatever, wherever he was going, if there was death, it was resurrecting back to life. If there was lack, there was abundance. If there was no wine, there is wine. And that is you and me. And now, even as you're looking at the small things, start looking at the things that you do have. The best ways is when you're going through a problem, this is what I do. I look at all his goodness of what he's done for me. And then even as I start doing that, I start thinking, thank you, Father, you did that for me. Thank you. And you know what? I, I, suddenly I forget everything that the devil is trying to show me and get my mind to a lack. And I'm like, no, I'm just going to start rejoicing. And start praising him. So start looking at, yeah, I have 500 rupees in my account. That is amazing. And start multiplying it. 
okay start rejoicing that's what i mean and then now it's not coming from here these people it's coming from abundance there's no one opportunity when they say a once in a lifetime offer if you don't take this it will go let it go because in the kingdom there are 100 offers okay i don't like this lack like if you don't take it now you've lost it it doesn't i don't even go after it there is much more in the kingdom there are many opportunities i used to think i will never get a driver i had this one driver for 7 years he was so good and i was so clingy i was like this, this guy leaves i don't know what i'll do and then after that i got like some 10 other nice drivers and for every season the driver that i got it's funny but they were equipped with a certain skill set that i needed during that season like at one time i had an interior thing going on and so this guy came with he knew some you know karigars and kahan kahan pe hota hai ho and then i felt my whole life is so tailor made and father that everything is added and so now i didn't become clingy i was just like like this like whatever has to be added will be added whatever has to go will go i'm not clingy even in beloved you know i never ask if you are coming you are my chart sons if you look at everyone in the flesh you're going to get irritated and carnal people do that but i expect you to come here for the word and it's the word that's going to bear fruit in your life the flesh is dead okay and there's if you want like perfect people we have to wait till christ comes we have glorified bodies then there is no sin people are going to mess up here and there so you your eyes are on the word and the word is going to bear fruit in your life and when you have receiving from the father that's my inheritance i'm not alone i have the father everything is getting added to you okay so the truth here you're going to love the next as we're building up and you'll start seeing yourself getting rich coming into a place from just having barely enough to coming into a place of abundance okay but first foundations no lack and why no lack a son lacks nothing it's not in my nature to have lack i am resurrection and i am life can you all say that i am resurrection and i am life it's not in my nature to lack yeah it comes from the devil okay and we don't acknowledge lack sons don't acknowledge lack let's just close in prayer let's give a tithe of all the increase that you receive today okay <clears throat> just say this after me father i thank you i'm a son in your kingdom jesus you are my high priest and right now i give you a thanksgiving of all the increase that came to me yeah and just begin to worship him just pray in tongues with it ओ फादर आई जस्ट थैंक यू फॉर द वर्ड जीजस आई थैंक यू दैट वी आर बॉर्न ऑफ यू बॉर्न फ्रॉम यू ऑफ योर सीड ऑफ योर मोनोजीन एंड आई थैंक यू फॉर दिस ट्रू दैट यू से इट्स नॉट इन अ नेचर टू लैक बिकॉज वी आर लिविंग ऑफ योर अबांडेंस योर किंगडम योर रिच इज नॉट फ्रॉम दिस अर्थ बट फ्रॉम योर वर्ल्ड and as you are so are we in this world and we just thank you for this i thank you for where you're even taking us and for each son hearing this word today i just thank you for this in jesus name amen we have refreshments so